Hi, my name is Patricia King, and I want to lead you in a prayer meeting today for the nation. On June 27th, uh, 2020, I woke up with a very foreboding um, alert, an urgent call to prayer from the Lord concerning protecting the United States of America from external threats because of our internal vulnerability. And he said, you need a firewall. You need a protective wall around the nation at such a time as this because of its vulnerability. And so I began to work on it immediately and gathered together with a number of leaders of different ministries who also felt the same conviction. And we came together to build a firewall. And so if you want more information about that firewall of prayer and you would like to take an hour of prayer on that wall on a regular basis, please go to firewallusa.com. And there's information there. And I would love to have you sign up as one of our fervent intercessors for the nation in this hour. We are in a critical hour and we, the church, need to tarry with Jesus for one hour. And if you can do that and all the way through uh, right now, we're praying all the way through to the election. And so that's from July the 4th, which is the launch day, all the way through to November 3rd. And then we'll decide what we're going to do after that. But we really um, are asking you to pray for one hour. So right now, I want to lead you into a one-hour prayer meeting. Um, these prayer points that I'm going through and the decrees, you can actually get on firewallusa.com. Uh, they are printable for you there. And so you can get them from there or you can just follow along with me. But let's give the Lord one hour in prayer right now. Just pray along with me. We'll go through these points. We'll go through decrees because the Bible says if any two of you are in agreement as touching anything that they may ask, it shall be done. And so you are in agreement with me as we decree this word of God and pray according to his will, we're gonna see the nation change. Thank you for joining me for this prayer meeting. We're gonna take a few minutes on each point. And the first one is to declare Jesus as the eternal King and Lord of the United States of America, according to Psalm 24. In Psalm 24, it says that all the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. And so we declare that Jesus Christ owns America and that he is king and he is Lord over this nation. We decree that he is the king of glory and we open up this nation for him to come and fill it. Fill it with his goodness, fill it with his truth, fill it with his holiness, his purity and his love. In Jesus' name, we declare and decree that Jesus Christ is the eternal king, not just a king for a moment, not just a king for, for an election year, but a king for all eternity over this nation. The Bible says that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. And so we decree over America that this nation has become the kingdom of our God. It is the nation that belongs to Jesus Christ. We decree and declare it. And if you have any more prayers to do with this, just continue on and pray into that. And I'm going to go to point number two. The second point is to pray for America to continue to stand with Israel and pray for the peace of Jerusalem according to Psalm 122.6. The scripture says that they prosper those who love her. So God will prosper us as we take care of Israel. Israel, the apple of his eye. Jerusalem, the place of his habitation in the earth. And if a nation partners with Israel and allies with Israel, great blessing comes upon them. The Bible says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. So Lord, we come before you right now and we pray for America to continue to be a strong ally of Israel and that America would be one of Israel's greatest blessings. Lord, that we would bless Israel in everything that she has need of in order to fulfill her destiny, that we would be there, that we would give prayer support, that we would give governmental support, that we would give financial support when needed, whatever 
whatever Israel needs, that we as a nation would stand with you in your heart for Israel so that Israel can come into the fullness of her destiny. And Lord, we know that as we look after what is important to you, that you will look after us. If we look after Israel, you will look after the United States of America. And so we decree and declare the, the favor that is toward Israel from this nation and that you would secure that favor for all times and in all generations in Jesus' powerful name. The third prayer point is to pray, pray, pray prayers of identificational repentance. That means that we're going to take the place of those who have sinned and ask God to forgive us as we repent on their behalf. So it says, pray prayers of identificational repentance from sinful thoughts, words, and deeds in the church and in the nation, according to 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and Daniel 9, 19 and 20. Now in 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and 15, it says that if God's people, that's you and I, if we will humble ourselves like we're doing right now and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, then he will hear from heaven. He will forgive our sin and he will heal our land. That is a perpetual promise. He is going to answer our prayer as we engage with him right now. And in Daniel 9, 19 and 20, we see Daniel doing that very thing, that he was interceding and repenting on behalf of his own sins and the sins of the nation. And then we see in 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the Lord might bring specific sins before you right now that you want to, to take ownership of, uh, sins that you've seen in the nation and that you want to take ownership of them and, and, and just repent on behalf of those who are sinning in the nation. So you just go ahead and do that as I begin to pray, you can go um, along with my prayer, but you can also uh, go off into your own prayers as well. So Lord, we come before you. And as a nation, we humble ourselves before you. And we admit that we have sinned against you and against each other. We have sinned against you in issues of not loving the unborn by taking their lives, Lord, as an our own choice by being selfish and by being proud and arrogant and and by demonstrating hatred towards even other races um, that are different from our own. Uh, Lord, that we have been hard-hearted, that we have had corruption in our midst. Even in the church, there's been corruption and immorality, and we have given ourselves over to all kinds of vices, Lord. And so we repent on behalf of these things. We are truly sorry. And we pray, Lord God, that your eyes would be toward us right now as we absorb um, the sin of the nation in this prayer of repentance. And we repent on behalf of the church and the nation and on behalf of the nation itself and ask you to forgive us according to 1 John 1, 9, that you would forgive us of our sin and that you would cleanse this nation from all unrighteousness in Jesus' name. The point number four in your uh, prayer directives there is pray for the church in America to be aligned to God's word, his promises, and the finished work of the cross and his ways. And this is out of, of course, Ephesians 1, uh, 3, that says we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places through Christ Jesus, through what Jesus did on the cross. And also 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, that says we have been granted through what Jesus finished on the cross, everything that pertains to life and to godliness. But the church in many ways has swayed away. They veered away from the word of God and they've left the plumb line of that word. So we're going to call it back so that we can live according to that word, obeying the word and honoring the word and honoring the finished work of the cross and living according to that. So Lord, we pray for the church in America. And Lord, that's every church, every denomination, every group, no matter how small or how big, for every believer in America to be aligned to your word. 
and not to excuse it or to make it say things that it doesn't say, but that they would embrace every believer, every church embracing the word of God and aligning to the word of God and that we would embrace your promises and live by your promises. And even in difficult times that we would not go into unbelief, but we would stand strong in faith that you would find a people of faith and perseverance in that faith, believing in your promises, because if you said it, you would make it good. And we honor the covenant, the blood covenant, the eternal covenant, Lord, that you established on the cross of Calvary 2000 years ago when you gave us a covenant of blessing. And we pull on that covenant right now and we pull it into the church in America that we would stand strong in this hour, in your ways and in your word. Your fifth directive in prayer is to pray for the love and honor of God to completely demolish and destroy strongholds of hate, including hate and dishonor shown towards the unborn, races, genders, authority, etc. We're going to pray this according to 1 Corinthians 13, 8, where it says love never fails. Love is the power that overcomes hate. And in this hour, we not only have hate brewing in the midst of the nation, but we have hatred from the outside um, of the nation wanting to come in and conquer, wanting to come in and subdue and oppress. So this is very important that we in the United States of America take full responsibility for what's happening internally so we can break the power of what's happening externally. Now, we know that we're not in a battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and, and works of wickedness and, and deep darkness that are out there in the unseen dimension. And even as God is love, that is his makeup, the atmosphere of the kingdom is love, but the devil is the opposite. He is hate. And the atmosphere of his kingdom is hate and discord and chaos and all those things that we are seeing in the nation right now. And so we're going to fight this spiritual battle because we've got spiritual weapons. The name of Jesus Christ is a weapon. The blood of Jesus is a weapon. The word of God is a weapon. And I'm asking you to rise up as a strong warrior on behalf of this nation. And let's fight off the enemy's attacks. And so, Lord, we thank you that you have instructed us saying it is the thief who comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But you came that we would have life and that we would have it in abundance. And we are discerning, Lord, that a spirit of hatred has turned itself loose in our nation, that the enemy has been strategizing, turning our hearts against each other, fighting one another, hating one another, offended with one another, betraying one another. And we ask, Lord God, for you to forgive us for these things. And for any area where we have not valued life, we ask that you would cleanse the slate with the power of your blood. And we decree your name and the power of your name to bring down hatred in the nation, the hatred towards the unborn that actually takes their life, the hatred towards um, uh, uh, racial differences, Lord, that, that lacks the value and the worth toward each human being. Lord, even all the gender contentions that we have right now, we break the power of that hatred in Jesus' name and we release love and honor and respect and Lord, for the issues of rebellion against authority and the anarchy that is raising its head, that is rooted in hatred, we break the power of that hatred and we release your love. We release the power of your love into our nation for such a time as this. Come and fill our nation with love. Fill this nation, every human being in this nation, that you would fill it with love, breaking down the power of hate, breaking down the power of animosity, not only within, but Lord, all around the nation. For those that are outside the nation, in other nations, when they look upon America, 
that they will not look upon us with hate, but that they will look upon us with love in Jesus' name. Just pray in tongues a little bit and pray for a saturation, a baptism of love fire into the nation and then outside the nation as well. And Lord, we thank you that you are love and we ask that you would stand in the midst of our nation as love. Stand in the midst of our church as love. Every church in the nation, every believer in the nation, having love himself standing in our midst so that we can fight this battle against hate, that we will diminish hate in our sphere of influence and we will be determined to walk in love in Jesus' powerful name. The sixth directive is to pray for righteousness and justice. And the Bible says that that this is the foundation of the Lord's throne. And we want that to be reestablished in America. We want to pray for the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court judges. We want to pray for law enforcement. And according to... um, Uh, Psalm 89, 14, and Psalm 97, 2, that decrees that righteousness and justice is the foundation of the throne. So if we want Jesus to rule and reign in the United States of America right now, we need to establish that throne. And so, Lord, we honor you. Jesus Christ, you are our chief justice. You are the king. You are the one on the throne. You are the one who ultimately makes every final decision because all authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto you. And Lord, we just lift up your throne right now and we insert it into the nation. We put it back into the foundation of the nation and that there will be respect for your righteousness and your justice, not just what man says that they want to be righteous or the twistedness of man's perceptions about justice. We want your righteousness We want your justice. And Lord, we just lift up the Supreme Court right now. And we ask, Lord, that righteous decisions and that just decisions would be made in and through the Supreme Court. And that you would appoint your people, not only in the federal Supreme Court, but but in the courts in every state, in every region, Lord God, you would appoint righteous people, righteous people who will stand for what is right according to your righteousness and according to your justice. And Lord, even if they are thinking of making a different decision that would be contrary to your righteousness and justice, we pray for conviction to come upon them now and for you to turn their minds, that you would turn their minds, turn their thoughts to align with your righteousness and justice and out of their mouth will come that truth in Jesus name. And Lord, we pray that even as Supreme Court justices are being appointed, Lord, um, in these coming years, that you would carefully choose those and appoint them and anoint them to be your voice for righteousness and justice in the Supreme Court. And Lord, that their decisions would be honored in Jesus name. We thank you, Lord, that you are filling the Supreme Court with your holiness. You are you are filling the Supreme Court with your justice. You are filling the Supreme Court and every decision that is being made, Lord, with your truth and that your truth will stand. Your word will stand. The decisions will be made according to your word that will stand for eternity. And Lord, we pray for law enforcement um, agents, Lord, police officers and the chief of police and all those who are bringing about law enforcement in this hour. We pray, Lord God, not only for their protection as they are out protecting people's lives and assets, but you would protect their heart against evil thinking and evil actions. Lord, we pray that every single one of them would come to know you and your ways and that they would make decisions and actions based on your love, that there would be no hate in any believer, that you would literally weed out that you would would pick out those with a wrong heart, those with an evil heart, those that have corruption in them, that you would remove them 
anyone in the justice system, anyone in the law enforcement system that is of a corrupt mind or corrupt actions or corrupt words or dishonest in any way or, or, or full of hate in any way, we ask that you would remove them and that only the righteous would remain. Only the righteous would remain. And we pray, Lord God, that our, our homes and our, our businesses and our streets would be kept safe because of your righteousness and your justice that is being laid into the foundation of this nation. According to Psalm 89, 14, we thank you, Lord God, for every, every citizen of this nation doing things justly and doing things rightly, that there would be no, oh, well, we'll just break the law here or break the law there. It doesn't matter. We bring everything into righteous alignment now in Jesus' name. And we speak a respect back into the nation for the law. And Lord, if there's any laws that have been made that are contrary to your righteousness and justice, such as um, abortion uh, laws and such as um, the definition of family and marriage and, and um, uh, drug laws, uh, including the legalization of marijuana, if any of them need to be re-looked upon and changed, Lord, we pray for change agents to be released into the legal system and into the lawmaking system, and these things would be overturned in Jesus' name. Just pray in tongues for a while, or if you have any personal um, issues that you want to pray into, just go ahead and do that. Your seventh prayer point is to pray for all government leaders to be filled with righteous and wives' motives and for every decision to be pleasing to God according to 1 Timothy 2.2. And it says in, in, in Timothy that if we pray for our government leaders, if we pray for kings and those in authority, then we will live. A, a tranquil life. And so, Lord, we pray for purifying fire to go now into government officials um, from uh, local levels all the way up into federal levels, Lord God, uh, from the president all the way down, Lord God, to the mayors and councilmen of cities, that there would be all corruption would be burned up and removed in Jesus' name. If there's any corruption, we put fire to it in Jesus' name. Uh, just take the baptism with fire and burn up the dross, Lord God, and, and, and address every proud and arrogant one, that there would be humility amongst the leaders and righteous decisions and wise decisions would be made, that every leader would embrace wisdom, saying, I need wisdom in order to lead well. And Lord, that there would be no um, under the table dishonesty going on, Lord God, that everything would be brought into proper alignment. We pray for protection over everyone that is serving in the area of government. Lord God, protection over their own souls from any corruption, but also protection over their health, protection over their lives, Lord God, um, especially the president. We pray for a hedge of protection around him in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that you are watching over him, his administration, and all of those that are serving in this nation city, state, um, national level leadership, Lord, we bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Just pray especially for any specific leader that's coming to your mind right now. And Lord, we do bring before you all elections, Lord God, that 
all elections would be righteous and that you would expose any corruption that is going on and annihilate the corruption and remove it, Lord God, that it would not be operating in the elections in Jesus' name. And Lord, that your hand would be on the leaders that you want to be in office and that there would be no um, lies being told about any of the candidates, that the, the lies would not prosper and that you would release great faith favor upon your candidates in Jesus' name. Lord, put a hedge around all elections in Jesus' name. Okay, your eighth point is to pray for all who live in the nation to respect and honor the Lord and his word, according to Psalm 116, uh, 57 and Psalm 33, verse 12. And Lord, we want you honored more than anyone. We want you worshiped, Lord God. And we pray for every single person in this nation. But we begin with your church. And we pray, Lord God, that those who attend church will not just be doing it because it's something to do, that they will attend church because they want to worship you and honor you and that they would be faithful in their tithes and in their offerings and in their their devotion before you their personal devotion before you that every leader every pastor every apostle prophet teacher evangelist lord every single one would honor you with all their heart would love you with all their heart mind and strength and Lord, we pray for those in our neighborhoods even, that they would just be visited by you throughout their day, that they, their, their thoughts would turn toward you in an honoring way, and that they would know that there is a Lord above all lords, there is a God above all other gods, that they would turn and worship and honor and respect. And when your name is mentioned, Lord God, at any time, at any time, and when prayer to you is mentioned, that there would be an honor and a respect, that the fear of the Lord would come into the people of this land, even those who do not know you yet, even those who are uh, worshiping according to, to other religions, that they would have revelation of you and respect and honor you and come to you in Jesus' powerful name. I thank you, Lord, that everyone in government positions will honor you, that they will respect your name, that they will respect prayer, and that they will respect your word in Jesus' name. Your ninth prayer point is to pray for a wall of protection, uh, protective fire uh, to surround America against invasion of any and every ungodly agenda of the enemy. And that's according to Zechariah 2.5. Zechariah 2.5 says that the Lord is a fire around us. And so I want you to get in your mind, just in your mind's eye, a picture of that fire just, just all around the nation and all around um, not only the main body of America, but around Hawaii, around Alaska, that every single border is protected by a wall of fire, and the Lord is that fire. In Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 27, I believe it is, it says the Lord is a fire from the loins up and a fire from the loins down. In Revelation 1, we see he has fire in his eyes and his feet are like burnished bronze, like that which comes out of fire. And so I want you to see the Lord as the man of fire and see him igniting fire, a fiery protection, a firewall all around this nation and you are part of that firewall because he's called you to pray and your prayers are being heard and he is putting this this fiery wall of protection where the enemy cannot get through it the enemy of plagues and pestilence and war and famine will not come through the firewall in Jesus name and no malintent against the USA from the enemy or any way that he's using people or other nations it will not hit the USA because this firewall is strong. This firewall is powerful because the Lord is our fire and he is putting fire around this nation right now in Jesus' name. 
Oh, I want you to see that fiery wall. And why don't you pray right now for the state that you live in to have fire around it. I live in the state of Arizona and I put a firewall all around the state of Arizona that the Lord's fire will protect this state and put it around your city. I live in Maricopa, Arizona. I put a firewall around my city because Jesus is a fire around us and put a firewall around your household, around your family, around your children and your grandchildren. Put a firewall around it because our Lord is a fire around us and he is a fire around this nation. Lord, we put a firewall around Washington, D.C., around the government buildings, Lord, that you are a fire of protection around our government. You are a fire over this nation. You are a fire of protection for us, that our enemies will not prevail, that we belong to you. This nation belongs to you. We belong to you. We make that decree in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that this nation is your nation, that you are our God, that you are our fire, and you will protect us. We speak shalom, into the United States of America, that your powerful peace will protect us, Lord God, at all times. This is who you are because you have put your hand on America and this nation belongs to you and we will stand as your watchman on the wall. We will be a wall of fire for you. You said that your ministers are flames of fire. Each and every one of us that is praying, we are a flame of fire around this nation because we are standing watch for the nation in this hour in Jesus' powerful name. Hallelujah. Just pray over, over specific regions that you have on your heart. Lord, I thank you for our, our southern border. You are a fire on that border. You are a fire and evil will not prevail against us. It will not penetrate the border. And Lord, our western border, our eastern border, our northern borders are protected, Lord God, because you are a wall of fire around us. And you have called us as your ministers of fire to build a wall. And we build a wall. And we particularly uh, pray a wall of fire around Alaska and around Hawaii. We speak your fire over, the fire of your love, the fire of your protection, the fire of your power in Jesus' mighty name. Your 10th uh, prayer directive is to pray for God's glory to fill the nation. And this is according to the same scripture out of Zechariah 2.5. In Zechariah 2.5, it says that the Lord is a fire around her and glory in the midst of her. Now, the word glory is basically all that God is and all that he has. It includes all of his promises. And so just imagine for a moment the fullness of all that God is, the heavenly environment. You know, Jesus said to pray in this way, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Imagine the glory of heaven coming in and saturating the air, the atmosphere, the soil of the United States of America, that God's glory, the very essence of all that he is and all that he has comes and fills this nation and brings his light and life into this nation. So Lord, we pray right now for your glory to fill America. Come and fill Fill us according to the boundaries that, that uh, define us, Lord. Come and fill us with your glory. Fill us with your glory. Let your glory, your manifest glory, fill every church in the nation, every household in the nation, every leader in the nation, every business in the nation. Let your glory come and fill this nation. Oh, that we would, would have our eyes open to behold your glory, to behold your ways, to behold your truth, that we would know you in all of your glory, Lord God, that there would be the glory of your healing filled 
this nation right now, that there would be no sickness in our midst, that there would be no deception, that the glory of your truth would come and fill this nation, the glory of your supernatural power, that you would come and fill this nation. Thank you, Lord, for filling this nation with supernatural power, dunamis power, miracle working power, the power that brings forth signs and wonders into the nation. And Lord, we pray for the glory of wealth. And wealth is um, one of the definitions of glory. And when we're talking about wealth, we're not just talking about money or provision in that sense, but the wealth of wisdom, the wealth of his peace, the wealth of well-being, the wealth of his strength, the wealth of his provision for sure. I want you to start seeing the glory, the glory of his wealth coming into the nation. Lord, we call forth, oh, I'm feeling the glory right now, actually. The weight of the glory of God is getting so heavy in this studio right now where I'm praying and I know it's getting heavy in your midst as well. And so, Lord, we just call forth the glory of your wealth into the United States. We thank you, Lord, for every single state being visited with wealth. We thank you, Lord, especially for provisional wealth coming into every state, every city. Lord, that there will be work for everyone, that every business will prosper in the nation, that there will be no failures because your glory is going to fill it, that every house of worship will be filled with glory and will be filled with success, will be filled with provision, that every uh, government leader, that every education system, Lord God, would be filled with glory, the wealth of your intelligence, the wealth of your truth, the wealth of your righteousness, the wealth of all that we can access in the heavenlies. Lord, we ask for angelic activity to come and invade our nation, that angels of glory Glory would come, that high-ranking angels would come and invade our nation, Lord God, bringing forth righteous purposes into the nation in Jesus' powerful name. Oh, thank you for your glory, Lord. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory, Lord. Thank you for your glory, filling every household, filling every individual, filling every church, filling every workplace, filling every business, filling the streets. Let your glory fill the streets. Let there be, let there be myriads and myriads and myriads and myriads and myriads of angels and high-ranking angels coming to serve the people of this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. Just pray into that glory a little bit longer. Let's just linger here a little bit longer. Pray for the schools, Lord, that every school and every um, institute of, uh, of high level learning would be filled with glory and truth and that every lie would be broken down in the midst of the manifestation of your glory. Oh, Lord, every household, every, every family, every marriage being visited by your glory, oh God, in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, number 11, we're going to pray for the health and the prosperity of all Americans, according to 3 John 1, 2. Now, America has been known to be one of the most generous nations in the whole world. And we want to continue to be generous, to meet the needs of the poor, to help the suffering, to help the oppressed, to fight for, for those who are war torn and what war torn and give them the aid that they need. And it says in 3 John 1, verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that in every respect you will prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Now our nation needs healing. I know that there's many issues about um, the medical system in America, but in God, we have a great medical plan and it is healing through Jesus Christ. And what I want to do right now is just pray that the healing power of Jesus Christ would sweep through our nation and that we would literally have a healing revival. In past revivals, such as John G. Lake Spokane was the healthiest city in America. 
because of his belief in the healing power of Jesus Christ. So Lord, we pray for a healing bomb to come and hit America, not only for physical illnesses, Lord God, and, and diseases and sickness, Lord God, but for the soul, the, the sin sick soul, the disturbed soul for, for mental illness, that your health and your healing would come into this nation. The deliverance would come to those who are addicted to drugs. Lord, we have an epidemic of drug addiction, but we, we annihilate it with health from heaven in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would set the captives free, that there would be a mass of freedom for drug addicts and for those that are addicted to different substances like alcohol or, or even um, uh, gambling addictions and, and uh, different addictions that would afflict the souls of men and women, Lord God. We break the power. We break the power of those strongholds in Jesus' name and we release health and wholeness. We release deliverance and healing in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for prosperity, for prosperity, which means more than enough, that we as a nation will have more than enough. Not only will we have enough to be comfortable ourselves for every single person, and Lord, especially visit those who are underprivileged, Lord God, less privileged than others, Lord, that you would visit them with blessing and with wisdom and with prosperity. And Lord, that there would be a prosperity that fills every household and every business and every every um, uh, uh, place, Lord, Lord God, where, where, um, where uh, there is pro provisional needs, that there would be more than enough and that our nation would overflow. And I'm just seeing a vision right now of the overflow of the abundance of God. Jesus, you came to give us life in its abundance. And we thank you that not only are we going to be enriched as a nation, but Lord God, it's going to overflow through our nation to other nations and other peoples that are in need in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, I ask forgiveness for any entitlement issues that we have given ourselves over to, for any lack of thanksgiving, for any pride. We ask forgiveness for that. We ask that you tear those things down and that you would create in us a grateful heart for your goodness, Lord God, for the way that you have supported us in health and in prosperity, year after year, decade upon decade, century upon century, you have been so good to us and we worship you. We worship you as our health, as our healer, as, our, as the one who prospers us, as the one who causes our soul to come into alignment to you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for, for pouring out grace upon us in this hour and for blessing our nation and for forgiving our land. Thank you, Father. And you can pray also for your own family's needs in this right now. I'm going to pray in tongues a little bit more. And as I do, pray for your family's health issues or your loved ones, the people that you know that need healing. Let's call them out by name right now. And those that have financial needs or those that need prosperity to visit their families, pray for your own families. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your health and for your prosperity in every aspect of life in America, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we do pray for a recovery of the economy in Jesus' name. Thank you for your mercy. We bring our nation to the mercy seat. And we thank you that you, your mercy triumphs over judgment. And you will bless our economy in Jesus' name. All right, your 12th prayer point is to pray for a great harvest of souls in America and for laborers to be thrust into the harvest fields according to John 4.35 and Luke 10.2. It says that the, the fields are white with harvest right now, but we need laborers to go out. So let's ignite the body to go out and be those laborers. And so, Lord, we do pray for the harvest in this nation. We thank you, Lord God, that, that there is a nation 
nation full of people who are hungry for you, who are ripe right now, who are crying out to know you, but they've never heard the gospel yet. And Lord, you said this gospel shall be preached to everyone. And so we release the gospel right now into the nation. And we thank you, Lord, that you are preparing people to hear the gospel and to have faith when they hear it and to receive the gospel, to receive you as their personal Savior and Lord. And Father, that there will be household salvations, that many would come to know you, that many would be brought into the kingdom for such a time as this, that parents and grandparents and children and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters, Lord, we thank you that your word says that if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, we and our house. And so I decree household salvations in America right now. And I pray for uh, everyone's neighbors, Lord, uh, for whole neighborhoods to be saved. And Lord, for, for unreached people, like even into the nursing homes and maybe into areas of the nation that have not yet heard the gospel. Lord, we pray right now for the outpouring of your spirit, Lord, in this nation to, to, um, to bring souls into the kingdom. And we thank you for the anointing and we decree and declare Isaiah 61 upon your labors, Lord, that says the spirit of the Lord God is upon them to bring good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set captives free, Lord, to proclaim claim the favorable day of the Lord and to comfort those who mourn. Lord God, to bring about a, a spirit of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We just release that anointing into our nation now. We pray for great gatherings, Lord, where people will come and hear your gospel and be saved and that miracle signs and wonders will accompany it. We pray, Lord God, for government leaders to be born again and spirit filled. We pray for business leaders to be born again Again and spirit filled. We pray for educational leaders to be born again and spirit filled. We pray for households, every household to be born again and spirit filled. And we pray for our nation to know you, the one true God. And so we release the name of Jesus Christ over our loved ones now. And I'm going to pray in tongues. And as I do, I want you to lift up specific names of people that you are burdened for their salvation and pray them into the kingdom right now. Oh, pour out the conviction of your spirit. Pour out a spirit of faith, Lord God, upon those who do not know you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, you are doing such a great job in this prayer meeting. We are, we are taking ground. This nation is being touched and impacted because God listens to every single prayer. It says in 1 John uh, 5, verse 14 and 15, that if we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we can have confidence that we have the request that we ask of him. That is a, a sure promise. And you have been praying according to God's will, according to his word, we've been praying. So every prayer is going to be answered that we have prayed today. And we have intercessors all all around this nation praying. They're taking their place on the wall. We are building a firewall around this nation to protect it for such a time as this from enemy forces that would want to come in and conquer, for, for demonic forces that would want to bring us down. We are protecting this nation and bringing it, in, bringing it into the fulfillment of its destiny and the purposes that God has for us. And this is not just for you and I, but this is for coming generations. We are 
are protecting our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren by taking a stand in this hour to protect the nation. I want you to get so stirred in prayer. We're going to go through decrees in a few moments because decrees is, is authoritative word from the King of Kings that we can decree into the nation. It's very powerful. In Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says that when that word goes forth, it doesn't return void. It accomplishes everything that it is sent to do. This is powerful prayer time. And you are being a part of saving our nation for such a time as this. Okay, let's finish up now with these decrees. There's 12 of them that we want to decree over the United States of America. And uh, we've only got less than about 15 minutes left in this prayer time. And so we're going to finish strong with the word of God. Now, the first decree is this, and you can read it. These are um, printable formats for you, or you can read them right off uh, the firewallusa.com website. But it says, in Jesus' name, I decree that the USA is turning to God, embracing the truth of his word and lawfulness, respecting authority. Let's say it again. Let's say it together. You can read it off your list at the same time I am. In Jesus' name, I decree that the USA is turning to God, embracing the truth of his word and lawfulness, respecting authority. See, this is so powerful that every time we say, in Jesus' name, that means with the highest authority. In Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. So we're making a decree in the name of the king. And it says in Esther 8.8 8, that if you make a decree in the name of the king, it will not be revoked. And so we're believing that as we send that word out into the nation, it's not returning void. It is going forth and it is bringing itself to pass. This is so powerful. Okay, the next decree in Jesus' name, remember, we're making it in the name of the King of Kings. In Jesus' name, I decree that the active, holy, and powerful conviction of the Holy Spirit is visiting every individual in the USA, drawing souls into true encounters with Christ. Isn't that amazing? I want you to imagine that for a moment, that the Holy Spirit, the powerful conviction of the Holy Spirit, just like in past revivals, like Finney's revivals or the First Great Awakening, um, the Welsh revival, that that power of conviction is visiting every single individual. Imagine in your own city that conviction of the Spirit coming. Let's say it again. In Jesus' name, I decree that the active holy and powerful conviction of the Holy Spirit is visiting every individual in the USA, drawing souls into true encounters with Christ. Amen. So we're reading every word as though we really mean it. Why? Because we do. And we're speaking it in faith. The third decree, in Jesus' name, I decree that all who serve the USA in government positions are visited by the righteousness, truth, and justice of God, and that they live in the fullness of Christ's wisdom in all they do. I decree that any corruption in government will be exposed and dealt with in wisdom and righteousness in order for the nation to be cleansed. Did you hear that decree? Let's decree it one more time with a lot of strength and a lot of focus. In Jesus' name, I decree that all who serve the USA in government positions are visited by the righteousness, truth, and justice of God, and that they live in the fullness of Christ's wisdom in all they do. I decree that any corruption in government will be exposed and dealt with in wisdom and righteousness in order for the nation to be cleansed. Let it be so. Amen. That's what amen means. So be it. Your fourth decree. In Jesus' name, I decree that the education leaders 
Systems and institutions in the USA are being filled with kingdom values, wisdom, conviction, and truth. And this is so important that we release this because our children and our young people, the next generation's leaders, are being taught things right now that need to be shifted to godly truth. And so I want you to stay on this one. This is so important that the truth comes back into place in the education systems. So let's say it uh, uh, one more time. Number four, in Jesus' name, I decree that the education leaders, systems, and institutions in the USA are being filled right now with kingdom values, wisdom, conviction, and truth. Amen. So be it. Decree number five. In Jesus' name, I decree that the body of Christ in the USA is actively walking with and serving the Lord with fullness of focus, sincerity of faith, and in the demonstration of the power of the Spirit. We're not just going to hold to a form of godliness and deny the power. We are going to embrace the power and demonstrate the power of the Spirit. Every believer walking in the fullness of all that God has for them. Number six. In Jesus' name, I decree that those who live in the USA are kept in good health and are offered excellent health services and care. I decree that all will live in the health and strength of the Lord. Amen. Number seven. In Jesus' name, I decree that the media, come on now, that the media in the USA communicates godly morals, values, and truth, and that the gospel is favored in media. Amen. Now, this is very, very important, this one from media, because the devil's trying to use media to change mindsets towards his deception rather than God's truth. Let's say it again. In Jesus' name, I decree that the media in the USA communicates godly morals, values, and truth, and that the gospel is favored in media. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. When you're making these decrees, you want to hang on every word and just see in, in your mind's eye even those words going out and being established like tent pegs in the nation. Number eight. In Jesus' name, I decree that every godly business and enterprise flourishes in the USA and every corrupt business and enterprise is exposed and falls. I decree prosperity and fruitfulness in my nation as a result of godliness in order for every individual to have all they need. We decree and declare it and give it our amen. Number nine, in Jesus' name, I decree that the marriages and families in the USA are blessed with love, joy, and peace, and that every home is filled with the goodness of God. I decree that every life conceived is honored, embraced, and protected with love and respect. Amen. This is an important decree for the family, that we will have our families, our marriages, our children, our grandchildren, all of our families bonded together in the Lord, living according to him. Okay, number 10. In Jesus' name, I decree that the body of Christ is mobilized into the harvest fields in the USA to bring forth much fruit to bring forth much fruit. And we've already prayed into this, but now we've decreed it, that the body of Christ is mobilized into the harvest fields. They're going to preach the gospel, and many shall be saved. Decree number 11. In Jesus' name, I decree that righteousness thrives in my nation in every realm of life, and that lawlessness and corruption have no place. Amen? 
We're going to get rid of this corruption. We're not going to tolerate it anymore. Let's say it again. In Jesus' name, this is in the name of the King of all kings, the one who has all authority. This is what we are decreeing in his name, on his behalf. I decree that righteousness thrives in the USA, in every realm of life, and that lawlessness and corruption have no place. So be it. And then our final decree, in Jesus' name, I decree that love is the greatest aim of all Americans and mutual love, honor, and respect is shown to all people. Amen. When we have that kind of love and honor and respect, there won't be any more aborted babies. There won't be any more racial tensions. There won't be any more gender slams or um, people stealing from each other or anything like that. It just won't happen when love and honor and respect are at work. That's what we're decreeing into our nation. We're going to annihilate the darkness that is in the nation. And let's decree together, Jesus is Lord over my nation. Amen? He is Lord over the United States of America. May God bless the United States of America. I want to thank you so much for joining me for the prayer meeting today and for praying through these prayer points. If you are not on our firewall yet, go to firewallusa.com and sign up. Put yourself on the wall. Let's build a wall of protection around our nation right now and bless our nation for generations to come. And on that site, you will be able to print out um, the prayer points that we just prayed through and the decrees that we just prayed through. And you can be a vital part of bringing transformation, protection, and fulfilled destiny to this nation. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you for giving your hour in prayer. The Lord says, will you not tarry for one hour? And you just did. God bless you.